Hi, I'm the Smoking Ape. I was chosen, along with some other ham radio YouTube content creators, by the ARRL to help promote the latest edition of the ARRL Handbook. It's new for 2022. The Handbook is a wealth of information for amateur radio operators, new and advanced alike. There's plenty of content in there for everybody. You probably found this video from the playlist, which will be linked below, which includes all of the videos that each one of us are performing. At the end of my video, I would encourage you to follow the playlist link over to my buddy Hayden's channel, Ham Radio DX, and see the video that he created. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at a section for choosing a battery for portable operations. Let's go ahead and get started. So here's the paper copy of the handbook. And this is a massive collection of information, 1,280 pages. Uh, this is a six volume set broken down into various parts and components. For this video, we are going to do a section from volume two, and it is on uh, batteries and battery selection. I just wanted to take a quick look at this. Um, you can't go wrong whether you have the paper version or the electronic version. Um, as mentioned, I was fortunate enough to get copies of both, and uh, I'm really, really glad. These books can be a little bit uh, intimidating uh, at first, because when you open them up and you look at them, you will see lots of information that is presented um, in a complex way. But what's important to take note here is that these handbooks cover just about everything that you would want to or need to know in terms of ham radio or amateur radio communications. And that's everything from a beginner's perspective all the way up to an advanced user's perspective. There's plenty of stuff in here for everybody, beginners included. Let's go ahead and take a look at the electronic copy. It's going to be a little bit easier for me to, uh, to, to uh, show that on screen. So here's the PDF version of the 2022 handbook for radio communications. Um, again, even in electronic copy, this is, a, this is a massive collection of material. It's available for both Windows and Macintosh. And I'll show you some links where you can buy either this or the paper copies. Uh, here we have an introduction to the downloadable supplemental content. Um, the supplemental content includes uh, articles from QST, QEX, and other, and other sources. Uh, articles, uh, some, here you go, have PCB board layouts, just tons of stuff that uh, you'll find helpful in your journey as a, as a ham radio operator. In this particular video, we are going to take a look at Chapter 7, Power Sources. And then you can see that uh, Chapter 7 is just chock full of information. And then down here at uh, 7.13.10, selecting a battery for portable operations is what we're going to focus on. And the whole PDF is hyperlinked, so you can see that I can just go ahead and I can click through that. Let me go ahead and I have old eyes and go ahead and expand that. So we're going to walk through this particular chapter and take a look at a couple of different things. Um, again, as I mentioned before, there are things that appear uh, very complex, but you shouldn't be intimidated. By going through it in the way we're going to show in this video, you'll see just how easy it would be to use reference material like this to choose your battery. And this technique. So here we are at the ARRL.org shop, and we went into the What's New tab, and I'll include a link to this below. Here you can see the paper versions of the handbook. This is the six volume book set. This is what I have, and you can see it's $59.95 and the ARRL handbook soft cover. This is a single volume set. Let's go in here and take a quick look. So taking a quick look in here, you can see key topics, radio electronics, theories and principles, circuit design, all through construction practices. I'm not going to go through all that for this video. You'll have the link and you'll be able to check it out. It talks a little bit about some new print items and things that they've added here, which is pretty cool. And then it goes through some of the supplemental. These are the new supplemental downloads, not just the ones from previous editions. Now, there is a download uh, you can get when you buy this book, the ebook and the supplemental content, or you could just buy the ebook in general. Here you can see there are the ebooks, $49.95. For you, the Mac and Linux version or the Windows version. And then when you buy this, you are emailed a download link where you'll be able to download this. You'll also be sent a key so you can install or activate your download. Choosing a battery for portable operation. Chapter 7, Section 13. 
10.10. So when choosing a battery, we have a few things to consider. How will we operate? A lot of folks go mobile or portable doing things called POTA or SOTA, which is parks on the air or summits on the air. And these are activations where folks go out, set up a, a radio station that they can take down when they're done. And they typically will power things off of a battery and some source of renewable energy, typically a solar panel. We're not going to get into all that, but that is one of the use cases that comes up mostly. The other thing you have to ask yourself, is this portable station going to be man portable? Are you going to use a bike to move it? Are you going to carry it on your back? A lot of people will keep these stations in a vehicle, drive to a destination, get out and potentially set it up or get out and hike or ride a bike and set it up. So in these cases, size and weight is important and something to consider. We also have to take a look at our power requirements. We have to power our radio. And as I mentioned, we have to think about renewable sources for our power, typically solar. We also have to think about peripheral devices. A lot of folks oper operate digital stations or they use things like a tablet or a laptop to log contacts. So are you gonna be powering these devices as well? If so, is it gonna be off of your battery? And if it's off of your battery, we need to account for them when we choose a battery. We also have to take in consideration the duration of activation. If you go out for an hour or two, that's one thing. If you go out on a multi-day trip, that's another. Even though we're looking at chapter seven, 13.10, we have to take a look at chapter 17, section 13 as a whole. And we do this because we want to get a better understanding of batteries. So this is the beginning of the chapter. And I'm not going to read through all this, but basically it tells you what a battery is and then how they can be used. It also goes into detail about different types of batteries and what are the pros and cons and advantages of others. And we'll take a look at that as we go on. There's also these tips section. Here we see a tip on battery safety. And it's important to consider safety when you're using any electronic devices, especially outside. You're uh, subject to things like weather and wind and rain and snow. And all of those things uh, need to be taken into consideration when you're building your portable station. One of the things that I really like is the chapter goes into detail about different battery types. Here is an example when they go into detail on lead acid batteries. You can see table 7.4. And it talks about advantages and limitations of lead batteries. And these are things that you want to consider when you go ahead and you purchase your battery. So, for example, they talk about how lead batteries are inexpensive and simple to manufacture. And they have a low cost per watt hour. They are mature and well understood technologies. And they provide dependable service. They talk about some other things. But let's jump down to limitations. They have low specific energy. And they have a poor weight to energy ratio. So a lot of times people will use lead acid batteries, given their cost, as backup power in a ham shack. But if you're going to be carrying it, man portable or riding on a bicycle, like we mentioned, you might want something a little bit lighter, something that has a higher energy ratio for the weight. Uh, and folks will typically look at lithium batteries, for example. They can be slow to charge and fully saturated can take up to 14 hours. And again, if you're outside and you're depending upon solar energy, this might be a problem for you as well. It might not be because you might have a battery that meets your specific power requirements. But again, you have size and weight considerations. Another thing that's really handy in the chapter is it does a lot of comparison over different types of battery chemistry, and that will help you make your decision as to what kind of battery you want. Here, for example, we see a comparison that compares higher current output to longer runtime. And you can see lead acid is in the lower left-hand corner. And you can start to see things like nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium batteries and lithium ion batteries, giving you the highest current output and the longest runtime. Again, that's why for portable operations, most folks choose lithium batteries. When you look through the handbook, there are sections that look like they might be intimidating and making the handbook seem like it's not for beginners. But as you've seen, we've already seen some information that is focused directly for beginners to help you make determinations and choices. Here are some more things from the battery chapter where we take a look at simple guidelines for discharging batteries or simple guidelines for storing batteries. These are important for folks to know because you're going to be charging your batteries and you're going to be storing your batteries. And this is presented in a straight consumable format that everybody can understand. This is what makes the book such a valuable asset in your ham shack or your ham radio journey. You can use the book to learn and grow, taking a look at beginner topics and then getting into more advanced topics as you progress your adventures or journey in amateur radio. So here we have chapter seven, section 1310. 
When choosing batteries for portable operation, consider the requirements that your type of operation will present and how your radio behaves when operated on batteries. And it goes into a lot more detail, and you can read through this. It continues over here in the second column, and it talks a little bit about summits on the air, and it talks about different types of things that you may need. It goes into developing a battery strategy, and we talked a little bit about that as we went through the slides. Further down here, it talks about calculating required capacity or for your battery. And we are going to walk through this formula that looks complex, but when we break it down, it's really not that bad. It's something you should be able to do. And then they have some battery selection tips. So I just wanted to point this out. Okay, we're going to use the formula from the book for calculating power requirements. So let's just take a look at a couple of things. Our transmission power requirements are 4 amps per hour. For receive, I put down 0.25 amps of power. These are just made up numbers and you can get them from the product manual specification sheets that come with your equipment. And then I have uh, my peripheral power and I just guessed that at 0.5 amps per hour. We're going to be operating single sideband in this example, so I put down 0.25 as a duty factor per the book's recommendation. And for this example, we're going to talk about a six hour operation time. So let's take a look at the formula from the book. And what we want to figure out first is our average operating power. And we take this by taking our peripheral current, our average receive current, and we add our average transmit current. Line two is starting to look like a formula. And so what we have here is our average power requirements is our peripheral plus the time that we spend receiving times the power requirement for receiving plus the time we spend transmitting times the duty factor times the transmission power requirement. And what we get is line three. So what we have for line three is 0.5 amp hours for our peripherals. Then we add that to 0.75, which is the percentage of the time that we will spend receiving, times 0.25 amps, which is the power requirement. And then we're going to add that to 0.25, which is the time we will spend transmitting, times 0.25, our duty factor, times 0.4, our power in amps for one hour of transmit operation. And what we get is 0.5 plus 0.5. 1875 amps for receive and 0.25 amps for transmission. And our average is going to be 0.937 amps per hour. And we want to take this average and we want to multiply that by T for time. And that is how we are going to get our capacity requirement. So C equals our average power times time. In this case, 0.9375. <laughs> it's a lot of numbers here, guys times six hours, and that gives us 5.625 amps. So the book recommends padding your capacity requirements by about 10%, give or take. And in this case, we end up with, we end up with 6.1875 amps, or roughly six amp hours of capacity is what we would need from a draw capability from any battery that we would select. Another thing I wanted to point out here is this chapter, and the book in general, is packed full of these hints and tips. Here we have power connections for portable operating, and they talk about the different types of connections radios have along with the different type of connections batteries have. And just some examples, here we can see some Anderson power poles and a barrel connector. It's important to make sure that whatever solution that you choose, you have good, clean, solid, and safe connections in your station when you go operating portable, or anywhere for that matter. And that's going to wrap up this video. I want to say thanks to the ARRL for considering me for this project and sending me a copy, both paper and electronic, of the handbook for 2022, free of charge for this particular project. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks, everybody.